Hello, I'm John from Reddit Aliens, and welcome back to Dr. Hollowed. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the biggest scandals or dramas that HR managers have faced. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our narrations. This was 2016. I am a quality manager and hired by a little capital equity group to go in and try to help out struggling businesses that they buy. Great job. I'm working with a pump company. Big manufacturing group that makes pumps for city water supplier, chlorine mixers, big machines to add chemicals and filter sewer lines, public pools, big stuff. On paper the company should have been profitable but they were losing crazy amounts of money. Sales were strong, margins high but they couldn't make ends meet. We go in and start digging. We uncovered a lot of shit, borderline fraud and just incompetence. One thing we found were the HR manager and the engineering manager were going to trade shows. Conferences and trainings together every three weeks or so. We thought it was weird to take an HR lady to a trade show or a conference on pump design. We did some digging and found expense reports and airline receipts that didn't match up. And hotels near conferences that were cancelled or didn't exist. Basically they were taking romantic getaways to have an affair and writing up close to $175,000 on company expense reports by claiming bogus business trips. Things like a romantic week in Maui, a four-day weekend at the Waldorf Astoria in NYC, skiing in Vermont, Cancun, so many trips to Miami we couldn't even keep them straight, cottage in Park City UT, dude ranch in NM, it was insane. All with fake conferences nearby or conferences that they paid for but never even showed up and signed in. And this is the messed up part. As soon as it all came out, HR fired the engineering manager and was like, oh yeah, that was all his idea, and we kept the HR manager on for another year or so. And this lady is now an HR director for a major aerospace manufacturing company. Oh dear lord, I am friends with an HR attorney for a large agency. So so many stories but possibly my favorites is one where they walked in and fired one woman for dereliction of duty soon as she showed up for her shift. Like she was horrible at her job and barely performed, she was probational and it was clearly not working out. She and her boss leave for lunch and when they return, they discover employee is back on campus and working like nothing happened. Even greeted them in the gates. They are shocked and ask why she's there when she's been terminated. Employee answered that I'm working you can't just fire me. This is my job and proceeds to turn around, ignore them, and keep working. They again repeat she's been terminated she needs to go. She says I reject that, I don't accept your termination. She literally had to almost be dragged out. It was quite entertaining. I worked in HR for a small fast food franchise. It somehow managed to be wild all the time but the most drawn out was one of the store managers called out of work because she had carbon monoxide poisoning and was in the hospital. Of course we wished her well and that was that for a while. Then she disappeared for a few days. She showed back up, said she was having some personal issues. Yada yada. Fine. Well then she called and said she had gotten arrested. Because she was giving someone a ride and they had gotten pulled over and found meth on the other person. Hmm. We just had a sneaking suspicion so we googled this woman. And she had been arrested multiple times for drug related charges. Including the time that she had just disappeared. Apparently they were transporting a fuck ton of meth to sell when they got busted the last time. Oh yeah and the time she got carbon monoxide? It was because she was cooking meth. I was in an Herm program at college while working at a bar. One night closing up it was the bartender, one of the owners, and me. I'd been there about a week. While the owner made comments to the female bartender of an innuendo manner, the bartender laughed it off. The owner opened a bottle of champagne and offered it to us. Glasses were accepted. She was counting the fridges beneath the bar, he walked over and offered to pour her more champagne. I went to THR kitchen to shut down the dish pit. I heard her make a noise so went out to check on things. He stood over her, her kneeling still doing inventory, he had her by the hair trying to feed her champagne against her will while using some very derogatory language. Hey, what the fuck? I said, on one hand everyone was dating or fucking a coworker, but this was clearly non-consensual. The owner sobered up, all for a sudden said he was leaving, called us both bitches and left while the bartender got up and fixed herself. I checked on the bartender who was clearly trying to minimize what had just happened, but thank me for saying something. Apparently the owner got this way sometimes when he did coke. Well the bartender had enough, she filed a complaint with corporate and asked if I'd witness for her. Of course. Over the next week, various other ladies from staff thanked me, some asked why I didn't brain him with a chair, etc. 
I had a labor relations exam to write at the same time corporate wanted to speak to me in regards to this investigation, so I had to ask for a rescheduling from my professor, I tried to push for extra credit as I was actively doing labor relations and HR adjacent stuff but she said no to that. I reported this to HR. I worked in a call center. Got a call from a customer claiming to be stalked by another call center advisor she'd talked to. This guy was on my team and a total creep. Had a wife and kids, too. He had used the customer's social media using her account details, then somehow found her OnlyFans page from her social media. He joined that and then went to her house and left flowers and gifts at her door. He started calling her talking about how he loved her and needed her and whatnot. He was fired pretty quickly after I reported it and his wife left him. Management had a little go at me for not defending the company and siding with the customer when she was reporting the issue and crying. But I told them I acted the best I could and in the customer's best interests and no manager was available to take the call off me at the time, meaning I had to deal with the entire phone call and report myself. Worked at a gas station. It was a tiny one on property of a grocery store. We were considered a department of the store, sold their product etc. HR slash management noticed that there had been some frequent and constant calls to 1 to 900 numbers from the gas station. They sent someone over to watch the footage. Now picture this. The back of the gas station was one long hallway that led to a desk. Barely enough room for three people to stand side by side. If you open the door to the back office, the manager would have his back turned to you. There was also a bathroom to the left halfway down the hall which doubled as storage. So some poor security guy is standing at the back desk watching footage and finds the gas station manager pounding off in the chair this guy is probably now sitting in. Touching the same desk, the same armrests. Everything. This manager would turn his back to the other employee, sit in the back and pound away at himself dialing 1 to 900 numbers. I can only imagine the moment he saw that and probably leapt out of the chair to go wash his hands. Worked in accounting at a bacon plant. The floor directly above our office spaces was a locker room for the floor workers. I had only been working there a few days when we heard a loud bang, a pause, and then a lot of screaming and yelling. A guy shot himself in the head in the locker room because his supervisor wouldn't leave her husband for him. I left that job a few years later because my direct report, that lived a couple blocks away from me, had a psychotic break, and left a voicemail telling me she had a gun and was going to kill me, because she should have been promoted instead of the company hiring me. She was institutionalized for six months. I quit when the company let her come back and I was forced to work with her, she then reported to my boss instead of me. I heard later that they promoted her to my position when I left. Also at that place, the factory didn't have an on-site IT department. I was young and familiar with computers, so I was voluntold to manually install a patch to all the PCs for the Iluvayu virus. There was one office that was always locked because he was the only person who worked third shift. I believe he worked with overseas salespeople and didn't actually have anything to do with our local operations. My boss got the key to his office and let me in. There were dozens of framed pictures of this guy's wife. Wedding pics, glamour shots, and nudes. I liked the crotchless, spread eagle body stocking on top of a transom photo. Yes, even the nudes were in frames. He was fired. Worked at a car rental company in my 20s. I worked at the airport location where we had a manager and an assistant manager. There were some issues at the airport location, some of them were caused by management telling the reps to do things. And then writing us up when the main office didn't like what we were told to do. My response was to start typing notes that said per M, X was done, when she caught on. She started changing the notes in the system, so I started going in and changing them back. But that's not the story I wanted to tell. So, due to issues at the airport, and only having a manager and an assistant manager, they wanted to add a shift lead position to help take up some of the slack. We had one employee that was a real go-getter very professional, his numbers were always good, etc. Since our most senior rep wasn't interested in changing her hours to take the position, we were certain that C was going to get it. Big meeting at the main office to make the announcement, all of us are sitting around the table, and the big boss finally opens the door and comes in. Followed by manager. Followed by HR. Followed by assistant manager. Followed by two police officers. They arrest C. After he'd been let out in cuffs, we got the story. Apparently, money had been going missing from the safe. A little here, a little there. They had been investigating for months and finally got the proof they needed. To say that we were all shocked was an understatement. A few of us knew that some money had gone missing, an entire cash bag had been emptied a few weeks before, but literally no one had suspected C was responsible. So, after everyone had recovered from the shock, they announced the new shift lead. 
it was a little anticlimactic. Not HR, but worked as a host at Cheesecake Factory and my boyfriend was a waiter. A waitress was was seeing one of the married bartenders, hooking up with him in the wine closet and texted someone a pic of it to another waiter who showed everyone. Long story short she roped bartender into trying to sell her kid online in exchange for a furnished apartment and a used car, but the buyer was an undercover FBI agent and they both went to prison. She was a total weirdo and would insist things be done the same way she was taught at the cheesecake factory she worked at before. Once she called me out for being unprofessional because my shirt was a little faded and didn't match my pants. Another time I tried to compliment her on her haircut by saying she looked really nice she corrected me and said no I look amazing. Her name is Jennifer Richards and it was all over the news, the selling her kid thing not the amazing hair thing. One of the employees was having random grinder hookups in the bathroom at work so his wife wouldn't find out. He would go missing for a half hour at a time multiple times a day. We watched the camera to figure out what he was doing. Over and over again he would lead different guys into the bathroom. One day alone we counted six different guys. We confronted him about it. Was in the process of letting him go and all of a sudden he grabs a pair of scissors and holds them to his throat. Screaming about how we ruined his life and he's going to end it all. Little did he know security was walking in when he was going off. The security officer walked right behind him and in one motion got the scissors and was restraining the guy. We called the police and EMTs. They took him away. About a month and a half later, he came back and claiming to have found Jesus. He and Jesus apparently prayed it over and they believe he should get his job back. One of the higher-ups heard about it and said when Jesus starts paying the payroll, then Jesus can decide who should work here.